If you are coming to Australia, you won't find a place to stay, or so they tell you. But is finding a rental truly mission impossible? Will you be living in a tent or a car park for months on end? In this video, I'll tell you how likely it is for you to find a rental, why it is so hard, and if this crisis will ever end. I'm not an Aussie, but I know a thing or two about the land down under. You're buzzing with excitement for your trip to Australia. But as the day approaches, reality hits hard and you ask yourself, Will I find a place to stay? Rental market is in crisis. The answer is yes. But it could take weeks or months of relentless searching, inspections, and applications with no guarantee of success. We've all seen the news reports with hundreds of people lining up for inspections. In 2024, you could be competing with 50 other applicants, or 100, in the hot spots. If you just arrived in Australia, good luck competing with those who already have a job and paperwork ready. Some even have cover letters for their dogs. It's a fierce competition. They've been in this game much longer. This crisis has been going on way before COVID. So will you end up camping in parks or sharing a shoebox with a dozen roomies? Not necessarily, but you need to plan ahead and stash some extra cash. The sad truth is that the rental market is a competition, not a charity. Even if you have family or friends already living here, Chances are they don't have a space to spare for you. Your best bet is to bring that extra cash to pay for an Airbnb for a few months while you settle in. You can also try a hostel, but the waiting list could be long. Get proactive, join local community groups on Facebook, yeah, Aussies still use Facebook, and see if someone could rent you a space for a short time. Renting in Australia can be absolute madness, but amidst the chaos, there are countless migrants who have rolled up their sleeves and made it work. So be one of them. So, why is it so hard to secure a rental in Australia? The simple answer is that Australia doesn't have enough houses. And this has been exacerbated by two trends. First, as COVID lockdowns forced us to spend more time at home, people now want to live in homes with more space and less sharing. Couples split, roommates parted ways, and suddenly, everyone wanted their own slice of privacy. And since thousands of people on temporary visas had to leave the country in 2020 to 2021, suddenly, there were plenty of housing options to choose from. Rent prices dropped, and people upgraded to nicer suburbs and bigger houses. This gave us the false impression that the housing shortage was not a real problem and that migration was under control. But when borders reopened, a tidal wave of international migrants flooded all at once. And that brings us to the second trend, the return of migration. In 2023, almost 750,000 immigrants landed in Australia, which was 70% more than the previous year. This of course increased again the demand for rentals and pushed prices to unprecedented heights. But this shouldn't have come as a surprise. We knew international students and working holidaymakers would eventually return once we reopened our borders. This was poor planning. The unfortunate reality is that the government didn't use the pandemic period to implement a robust long-term migration strategy. We just went straight back to business as usual without enough housing to cope with the high influx of immigrants. The government pushed hard to bring migration levels back to normal, but they really didn't stop to think about the how. So will this problem ever get solved? I won't pretend to know the answer to a problem economic and social experts have failed to solve, but I'll give you three of the proposed solutions. First up, build more houses. This one is obvious, but it's not as simple as it looks. The government is planning to invest 10 billion Australian dollars to build more homes. With this money, they expect to build 1.2 million new homes over the next five years. That means building at least 240,000 homes every year, which would certainly ease the crisis. Sounds promising, right? Well, not quite. In 2023, Australia barely managed to build 170,000 new homes, and that was with builders working at full steam. The demand is sky high. There's a huge backlog from COVID, and we're short on tradies. Maybe we could bring in more skilled workers from overseas, but more migrants would put more pressure on the housing market, and we will need more tradies to build more homes. So we bring in more migrants again, and we're going to end up in this crazy loop. Another solution? Build high. Taller buildings, more apartments, more density. But this one is even more challenging. Something you'll notice about Aussies is that they don't like apartments. Take Melbourne, for example. It recently got crowned the largest city in Australia, but only because it spread out so much that it now spans over 100 kilometers, and it takes almost two hours to get from one end to the other. Perth is another example. That city keeps expanding horizontally like crazy when they could be investing in high-rise buildings to accommodate everyone. So why don't they do it? Well, you may have heard of the term NIMBYism, which stands for not in my backyard. These are folks who oppose big developments for fear of changing the character of their neighborhoods. 
In most suburbs across Australia, the law only allows you to build standalone houses. This has resulted in people living in remote suburbs with limited access to public transportation, heavily relying on cars and making traffic a nightmare. But NIMBYism won't go away without a fight. It's probably just easier to go with the first solution. And the third solution is a controversial one. Remove tax breaks for property investors. Australia introduced tax breaks and incentives like negative gearing during the 1930s. Negative what? Negative gearing. In lame terms, it is a little help from the government when you're losing money on your property investment. For example, you buy an investment house, but the mortgage costs more than what you get back from renting it. Then you can use that loss to pay less income taxes. So even if you lose money, you don't feel the sting as much. I can see why this is a huge help for the regular bloke who wants to enter the market with a safe investment. Many even argue that negative gearing stimulates investment in rentals, which ultimately increases the supply. But the reality is that now, you have a wealthy few owning vast property portfolios without really contributing to building more houses. And we need more homes! Anyway, this is a dead end and no one wants to talk about it. The bottom line is that we need to build more homes, more apartments, more public housing, more density, and faster. The demand is only set to rise with a growing influx of migrants, but also with Gen Z stepping into the workforce, getting married and growing families. And while this growth is a good thing, more people, more productivity, better economy, Australia needs to get their shit together to rise to the challenge. I mean, at least cut the red tape and speed up those building permits, mate. While we wait for this to happen, renters will continue to hurt the most. How are they coping with the rising prices? Well, check out the next video to find out more.